Yo, what's up, everyone? Today, I want to talk about some nerd stuff. And by that, I mean specifically a Japanese-only Naruto game on the GameCube. This video is going to be good. So, I've done this with a couple other videos. I like looking through, like, physical objects pertaining to the topic I'm talking about. I feel like for a lot of people, it's really cool to physically see this stuff. Because, you know, you might be experiencing it a little more digitally if you catch my drift so today i want to talk about i'm not going to try to pronounce it in japanese i got like eight hours of duolingo so what we're going to talk about is the fourth naruto clash and ninja game on the gamecube so the first thing i want to talk about is how gamecube boxes differ in japan compared to america i believe europe is way more similar to wait you know i think i think europe is similar to japan i'm actually I'm actually not sure. I, I should have looked that up beforehand. Uh, if, if you're European, let me know what your GameCube boxes look like. I'll look it up myself after the video, but like, just tell me about your GameCube boxes. So, for example, since I'm presuming most of my audience is American, I have one American GameCube game here just to show off like the size difference and how they're literally like completely different. So we got Pokemon Coliseum here, and, you know, it's... I'm so used to seeing the American cases, so for me, this is pretty normal looking. Obviously, you know, mini DVDs and all that. I I love mini DVDs, by the way. I just I just have to say that. So obviously, we got like full size booklets, full size pertaining to you know the full size of the American case. And so then I got a couple of Japanese cases here, and yeah, you know, excuse my expert camera work. This is why. I am a technical nerd, I am not a camera person, nor do I have camera equipment. So I just think that's, I just think that's fun, it has a little personality in these videos. So, this, specifically, I, I picked this out of my shelf for a reason, this was also developed by the same company, Aiding. I, I want to say that's how you pronounce Aiding, and I'm going to talk about them in a second. But again, here's an example of a Japanese GameCube case. And I also have, this, this one's interesting. This one is a Japanese only, obviously. Bleach game for the GameCube that essentially was like a predecessor to what we got with Shattered Blade on the Wii. But because, you know, you're not waggling the Wii mode all over the place, the game has like actual normal controls. And, you know, for being like a, a random anime fighter, I actually kind of like it quite a bit. Ch definitely check this one out at some point. Maybe I'll talk about it. But for now, that's not what we're focusing on. What I think, especially, it seems like a lot of people... Back when I was a little younger, let's not look at the mic cable, don't even, don't even worry about that. A lot of people, even like, they really wanted to get their hands on this. And it's like, for me, it was strange seeing so many people have, you know, like a heightened value of like a random anime game. Now that's coming from me because I was, I was and still am super into like manga and anime stuff. Um, so for me, it seemed like maybe more normal taste people having GameCubes and stuff like that, you, you know, you'd be surprised that English is my first language. It sounds like I never get out of my house and talk to anyone with the way I describe stuff. But, yeah, the, f the fact that so many people were, like, trying to get, like, a random Japanese Naruto GameCube game was always strange to me. But the thing is, like, the game is actually pretty good. And that's, obviously, that's what we're talking about today. And we're going to, I'm going to cut to, like, footage here in a second and talk about the game itself. But like I said, I always like looking at the physical boxes and stuff of this kind of, especially, it's like, I didn't grow up in Japan, obviously. And to me, it's cool to see the lens of somebody growing up in Japan and how maybe their childhood was or what they experienced growing up. I think it's like, you know, especially for a lot of... <laughs> For a lot of nerds like me, I feel like the stuff you play as you grew up really kind of shaped some of your interest as you, you know, as you grew up and became an adult and all this kind of stuff. I'm, look at, I'm trying to, like, throw down life lessons over here. I'm just trying to talk about a Naruto game. But, like, legitimately, I feel like a lot of what I played growing up shaped my interest a lot. Like, for example, I'm still obsessed with Mega Man games, and that's probably because, like, one of the first games I really remember playing was, like, Mega Man 2 on the Game Boy. So... So, you know, there's probably some Japanese kids and stuff that grew up playing this kind of stuff on their GameCube or whatever. So, obviously, boxes are way small. I already, like, kind of dissected this. That way I didn't have to try to one-hand this. So, boxes are way smaller. Th this is always interesting to me, like, for these Naruto games. They put, like, just about every character you could play as on the back. I'm assuming that was a selling point. 
So you got different screenshots and stuff. Like I said, I have eight hours of Duolingo. But there's like the... So that's the other thing you could probably see. There's like Japanese GameCube games have like sleeves on top of them. They're made out of cardboard. Obviously ours is more like plasticky. So then this is how the inside looks. It's just, you know, just the mini DVD and the memory card slot with a, a way more practical case size. I think I think these smaller GameCube games are adorable. I love how small they are. This would just, like, also, like, if we're talking about, like, sheer practicality, this would make so much sense as far as, first of all, you're not using a full-size DVD, you're using a mini DVD. And if you're talking about, like, store real estate, like physical real estate, this would be so much easier to shelve and package and process and ship around and s display and all that kind of stuff. Again, because you don't you don't need a bigger case than that. You barely, in my opinion, you barely even need the memory card slot. But then, obviously, what we have here is the booklet, and I'm going to try my best here to kind of comb through the booklet a little bit. So we got, I'm assuming that's probably name of the game or something or booklet. Like I said, eight hours of Duolingo. We got zero ratings and stuff on the back. Now, I'm going to try to pan through this booklet a little bit. Ex excuse this awful camera work for a second. So, it's just probably like safety warnings, you know, don't don't play your games for 24 hours straight in a dark room. Obviously, how to put in your disc and all that. This stuff, you know, on the surface, might be boring for, for some people. But, on the other hand, if you've never seen the Japanese GameCube game, it might be kind of cool to see, like, their warnings and how to, like, you know... How they were uh, showing off how to like, you know, put your disc in, plug in your controller, turn on your console. Don't, you know, don't stick anything metal in the controller port. I don't know. Whatever warnings they might have. Obviously, we got controls here. I can't read any of that. Don't even, don't even worry about it. You know how hard this is to do with one hand? I mean, it's probably pretty obvious. So here it looks like we're going through. I'm, I don't know. Is that like story stuff? Are they just talking about what arc? This goes up to, because this goes up to the end of the first part of Naruto, and I'll get more into that as I'm actually talking about the game. It's probably just going over what options in the menu there are, like what game modes, rather. And we got a little bit, some screenshots and stuff going on. We got one of them, uh, uh, X button moves. I, they don't call them ultimate juices in here, because that's like for ultimate ninja. Showing off like some of the three on three stuff. This is, see, like, I wish I could tell you what all this stuff is, but again, I can't read any of it, and the way I'm recording this, I can't translate any of it. However, maybe this is telling you stuff that you can do in, like, two-player. I can make assumptions, because this game does go up to four players, including just three as well, which I think would be pretty cool. So, yeah, this is this is showing, like, what modes you can do with a certain amount of players. You can have your CPUs cover everything or nothing if you want. Showing off four player stuff. This is the options menu. I can see from that much. And this might be like mission mode. This is probably mission mode stuff, but I'm also probably talking out of my, you know. This might be. Is this showing what parts of the screen are what? I think that's exactly what it is. Like, here's your round counter, your health bar, your. Chakra gauge, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and they're showing, like, controls. Which I'm going to talk more about when I actually boot the game up, but... I don't know, I think I think this stuff's really cool. And again, like, I'm a little more privileged in the fact that I own this stuff physically. And, you know, I guarantee there's a, a, a good fraction of people that don't and would like to see this kind of stuff. To me, this is way more interesting than just looking at, like, a scan of the booklet online... Because then you can kind of see it in, you know, in a physical space and see what it's like. This, like I said, this stuff is just so cool to me. And it's showing, like, substitutions and sidestepping. Oh, and, okay, now we're at the point where I'm not going to go through all this anymore. But this is kind of cool. They got, like, specific moves for the different characters and stuff. And I don't think it goes over, like, secret characters. I think it just goes over, like, a certain amount of base characters. But yeah, so you got like an actual kind of move list in the back here, which is definitely cool. I think it's just it's more of that, more of that, more move list stuff. No, wait, you, you wait, wait, hold on. Oh yeah, they they kind of 
They kind of do have some stuff like that. Oh yeah, they're no, they're not hiding nothing. Never mind. <laughs> and then yo, we got advertisements in the back. Let's go. We got some V jump stuff. Probably. What well, like I like how they're like advertising this game. It's like, I granted this is probably some V jump specific thing. We got Path of the Ninja Two. I think is what that. I've never played those ones specifically. And then this is. Oh, this is um. Ninja Council 3. So, that goes over how it is physically. Oh, if you want, I can take a closer look at the actual disc itself. So, you got Naruto, Sasuke on there. It's cool stuff. Alright, so that's enough of physical objects and whatnot. Now, let's actually talk about the game. Alright, so now we're into the actual footage part of everything. So, I found the one-on-one -on -one training mode because I want to go over character roster, game mechanics, all this kind of stuff. However, let me preface this, that there is indeed an English translation of this. I'm just being stubborn and running my uh, actual GameCube disc. However, you could totally take your copy, dump it, patch it, and still run it on your GameCube. That would be, like, the way smarter thing to do, but sometimes I'm just a little, um, like I said, a little stubborn with this kind of stuff. I want to use my, my real disc and stuff. Like, I have a copy of... The, like the e-reader version or update of Animal Crossing that was, you know, Japanese only in the GameCube. I played a fair amount of that, not even translating it, just trying to guess and screw around. I should totally just apply the translation and just play it like a normal human being, but sometimes I kind of I kind of lose the plot with the stuff. So, moving on, I just want you to know that that's an option, because the point of all my videos is I'm talking about something cool that I want you to go try out yourself. So, this is this is an anime game. Very important to have cool characters. You you know what I'm saying. I was a huge fan of Naruto. I still like Naruto, but I don't keep up with it. I don't watch Baruto or read it or anything. I stopped with Shippuden, and even even like the latter half of Shippuden, I wasn't I wasn't really having it. I like I like Madara. Madara is my jam. Um, however. Part 1 Naruto, I very much enjoy. I still think that's, like, you know, that holds up and stuff. So the character roster for me, I it's very special to me. I like it a lot. There's still later Japanese-only Clash Ninja games, like, uh, like, essentially, excuse me, but, like, Gekata Ninja Tyson Special, excuse my pronunciation, that was the last one they made, and that was on the Wii. That, that game's really good, too, and it's got, you know, a more modern character roster for Naruto stuff. And by modern, I mean, like, I don't know, like, 2010? <laughs> so, this game, this was the last Clash of Ninja they did on the GameCube. This game has a lot of characters. I'm going to kind of, like, speed through some of it. Because, like, you know, it's it's not a shocker that you can play as Kakashi. You know, I think that he was in every single one of them. But you got, like... So this is, like, if you only played the Clash Ninja 2 as an American... You know, we got stuff like Choji here. Uh, I think she was already in American Clash Ninja 2. Uh, I, think, I think Shino... Shino, I don't believe, was in American Clash Ninja 2. I, I keep saying American Clash Ninja 2, but we had the same version over here, just, you know, with an English translation. Uh, best character, Dog. And you know what? I guess I shouldn't make the assumption, because, you know, somebody might have never played any of the Clash Ninja games. So you can play as the Dog, and you can have, like, dog on dog mirror matches and they are a wreck and you should totally you need to do like four player dog matches i'm, pr I'm pretty sure you can do it. i don't think a game, game stops you from doing that uh you got you know you got the, the, the sand you can play as just the puppet which i i like that i think that's cool uh you got you know one of the best naruto characters uh you can play th this is you know there's not many games you can play as a ruka and I, th I know there were, you could in starting from Ultimate Ninja Storm Revolution, I believe. And I think he's still in there in uh, Storm 4. I, I, or was he not in Revolution? I don't remember, but you got Aruka. And this is the deep cut. Uh, Mizuki, I think, is his name and, and or pronunciation. He, it's literally a clone of Aruka's moveset. But, like, he was in what? Like, one episode? Like, like one chapter? Like... It is so cool that they have him as a playable character. It's just such a random deep cut. And I'm not talking about, like, 
I think there was like some anime only filler arc that had him turn into an animal or something. Dude, I don't know. But point being, you got you got you got him here. You you got snake lady. You got old man. Very important. You got you know Jiraiya Sonate, one of the best characters of Orochimaru. You got now this is cool. You got all like the Sound Ninja people. They're only like their their second state versions, but like that's still super super cool. This this, this dude's probably my favorite out of all of them. I like that he's got a little a little buddy with him. Uh, this is this is probably like my favorite Naruto character. I love Kabuto. Kabuto is cool. Uh, you got Tachi. You got I still don't know how to pronounce this man. And then, you know, to, to top it off, we got, like, Curse Mark Sasuke. We got the the Nine Tails, but, like, end of series Nine Tails Naruto. And then you got special Hinata with the Yakugan. I, man, this is digging up some old memories. So, you know, this game's got a great roster. And what's cool about this is in, like, the team battle stuff, because this, this game was very focused on, you know, multiplayer and team battles and stuff. If you If you do stuff like the three and three battles, they're not three at once it's more like you i think you just swap in and out and stuff but then like certain characters even if in like the manga they'd have nothing to do with each other like you have a kakashi sasuke and a tachi special and they do like this jutsu like together and can combine their jutsus and stuff like that it's, it's really it's really cool stuff uh so i want to actually go over the gameplay and explain why i actually think this game is pretty great and why it kind of makes sense that it's pretty great. So we're going to go, just because I feel like it's good to explain some mechanics, we're going to go with uh, uh, Mist Village Man. That was the thing, right? The village hidden in the mist. Mist, yes, yes, yes. So some characters have different costumes, which is cool. I think Gara is one of them. Sasuke as well. I think if you press the Y button, yeah, you get like tuning exam Sasuke. So we got some stages. We got uh, Sauna. We got Sand Village. We got the like the top of the roof stuff when Orochimaru fought Third Hokage. Uh, I feel like this was the town where like Itachi bullied Sasuke. We got we got the Nine Tails thingy thingy inside Naruto. I don't know how that makes sense. I'm not worried about it. We got you the what do they call it the three way deadlock. We got Toad. We got uh, Hokage rooftop thing. I, 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 I like this stage a lot. We got Leaf Village. We got Leaf Village. We got Leaf Village. Uh, I think that's like supposed to be the forest thing during like the exam stuff in the beginning. We got the bridge, which is cool. We got the bridge under different weather. We got Toad. We got... And then, like, so yeah, some different like variants of some of the stages, which is cool. Oh, uh, tuning exam stuff. Tuning exam stuff. I think this is more tuning exam stuff. Uh, this, I think, was, like, the one, like, hospital area or something near the end of Naruto. And, like, uh, Sasuke saw Naruto do his Rasengan thing. And he's like, oh, he's strong. Oh, my God. Uh, this is a stage. I don't... I think it's just a stage. It's cool. Same with this. Like, I don't know what this is supposed to be. Sa same with this. I don't know what this is supposed to be, but we've got, like, caution tape going on there. We got, like, a frozen over, uh, what a Final Valley. Ooh. Don't know what this is supposed to be. Uh, I think that's part of the three-way deadlock thing. Just a different variant. Final Valley stuff, and then, like, random. So, we'll pick one of the stages where I'm like, I don't know what this is supposed to be, but it's cool. So, let me preface this, too. I think, I think I forgot to say this. So this is straight up, like, this is just my real GameCube. What I'm currently doing is I have an older HDMI, HDMI cube. It's, it is spelled like that's HDMI cube. It plugs into the digital out slot and it's a mini HDMI. I eventually got like a mini HDMI to normal HDMI adapter. Um, I'm running it through an M Classic upscaler, and then what you're seeing is running through my very terrible capture card. Oh, that my whole point is that this is like a real GameCube hardware, and then what I'm doing is running it through Swiss. This game already supports 480p; it supports progressive scan. But then, if you run it through Swiss, you have options for like real widescreen, like it actually affects like the 3D geometry as, as well and stuff. It's very, very useful program um, if you want. 
there's guides online and stuff to run Swiss and new GameCube. There's so many options now. I'm using a very old action replay method be- because I was on the forefront of this stuff. I was trying out all this cool stuff like right as it was happening. So my equipment is kind of older as far as how I'm doing GameCube homebrew and stuff like that, Game GameCube software, whatever. The most modern thing I have, and this is what I would highly recommend, is the SD to SP adapters. That, that Those letters are completely incorrect. There are adapters that plug into the serial port on the bottom of the GameCube that you can plug a micro SD card into, and you can start running your software off of there and run your legitimate backups off of that. The speed, the loading speed's great and stuff like that. I highly recommend that. That's something I've more recently got into. Um, so yeah, there, there's ways to do this. I know a lot of people, they're probably just, they want to use some emulation. Totally cool. I'm just, a, I'm just a channel where I love real hardware. I love showing what hardware can do. And that's kind of, that's kind of my thing. It's like, if you want to play in real hardware, here's like the best case scenario without spending six grand. This is like user grade scenario. If you're, if you care about image quality, like I do, but you also, you have a hole in your pocket and you can't do anything about that. So, so the reason I think in retroactively that I actually like these games so much. So they're made by aiding. They're made by aiding and aiding later on after these games, they went on to make, to be part of the development of stuff like Tatsunoko versus Capcom, which I think is like still one of the best fighting games ever. They had a hand in development of Marvel vs. Capcom 3 and Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Again, some of the best fighting games ever. And also, a more recent example, probably like my favorite recent fighting game release, they had their hands in DNF Duel. And I, I love DNF Duel. And I feel like they have, especially with like Tatsunoko vs. Capcom, a very similar art style to these games where it's like, it is... It is, like, cell shaded but it's not, like, as heavy as, like, Jet Set Radio and Jet Set Radio Future, but it's definitely, like, a more shaded approach, which I think works very well for this. I really, I really do like the way this looks graphically, especially when you consider this is a GameCube game. I kind of like the way this looks more than the older Ultimate Ninja games. Now, here's my thing. Here's my thing. We're going to talk about the gameplay, and then whether or not you want to hear it, I am going to be throwing a little bit of... A little bit of shade of the Ultimate Ninja games, including the Storm games. I'm sorry if you don't want to be here for that. Totally understand. So, the one, the one thing one thing I wish is the movement is all done with the analog stick, not the D-pad. You can't do any D-pad stuff. If you're, you know, if you're emulating this, you could totally get around that. So, you got the B button. You got your normal attacks. I can't really conflate it to, like light and heavy it's not there's nothing really like that it's more like you got normal attacks with the b button and then your a button your a button is like extra it's usually like a range option for most characters like they'll throw some kunai or something like that or shuriken or whatever and then characters like zebza have something else like again like sword so they get additional moves with the a button so it's not like i said you can't really compare it to light and heavy attacks but it you can do like Say I want to do B, B, and then the A button, and that's a that's a, a combo in its own right. You can do, like, A button in midair for something like that, and then you can do B button for something that staggers. So, again, this is what's kind of cool. So, already, there's a, there is some there is some sauce here. You can kind of play this like it's a almost, almost a legitimate fighting game. So, the fact that there is stack, there is low attacks like that, I think there is technically... Yeah, because not not low attack. There is no such thing as low, medium, high. I think technically in this, but like you can hold down and then you get a different, a different. I think an entirely different move set for everything by holding down. Yeah, because you got like, and I think I could do like B B low A, and then yeah, C or down A, and there's so th- there's this mechanic too where if you press like back B, it will it's like an armored attack, and that that can like what is the, what does this option mean? Jumping. Okay. We want, like, attack... Yes, like... Okay, like, can I do back beat? Oh, no! I got... I got... I got this. Attack. Attack me. Oh, no. Wait. Come on. Well, I think it doesn't work for, like, the A button attacks. You know, you're just... Is this gonna be a case of trust me, bro? I don't want it to be. Uh, This is starting to look like... All right, trust me, bro. <laughs> I don't have another controller plugged in right now. Oh, there's grabs. So you can 
grab somebody. That's an actual, you know, mechanic. I think you can air grab too, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure air grabbing is a thing. So I think air blocking is also a thing. I think. You know what? I could, I could be wrong on this. Could be wrong. I kind of wish I plugged in a psychic controller, but that that would also be kind of hard to control. This isn't an in-depth tutorial on how to play this game. I'm just going over why I like it. So yeah, you got different combos, and you can mix and match the A button with the B button for different combos. You can hold back A. This is like a, just a straight up like counter. Not I I don't. Well, some people's are a counter. His back A might be more like a substitution where he just gets out of the way. So L and R, you can just like you know like a 3D fighting game. You could dodge inward and outward. And also, for three bars of your chakra bar, you can substitute out of a combo, which to me is a much higher penalty than like in the Storm games. And it feels like it's way more a, of a decision you have to make as to whether or not you want to save up for like your jutsu stuff or spend 75% of your meter on getting out of a combo. I feel like it's way more of a reasonable approach to take than having darn near infinite substitutions where it just becomes a substitution fest where this is like it's more of a calculated move that you have to make so you know you got some normal attacks you got your additional attacks with a you got your grab button you got your your dodging so obviously you got c stick c stick resets in training mode oh okay um so obviously i left out the x button so this is where the cool stuff if you're a casual comes into play um, which, you know, I, once upon a time, I was in, indeed very casual fighting games. I just enjoy playing them. There's, you know, there's no, sh there's no, there's, there's no shame in that. And I feel like something like this, if you're into Naruto, this is a very fun game to play casually with your friends and stuff like that. So, whole bar, you got, oh, I love this animation. This is so cool. So, essentially like a super move. And those cannot be guarded against in normal circumstances. Now, I, I don't think you can, yeah, you can kind of combo into them too. So you got, the, I just, just appreciate that. I love that. That is so, I don't know why. I love that so much. It's so cool. So something they started doing, and I think it was Clash of Ninja 3, where you can start doing like down X, and then you have a different one. Some of them, I think, only take 75% meter. Some of them, I think, are full. Uh, at least I think so. Maybe it was like later Wii ones where they started using different chakra amounts. But so like, this is more like of a crowd control thing. If you're doing like, three or four player matches, but I think you could still, yeah, you could totally, this, see, even as, like, somebody that plays fighting games competitively, this is enough to kind of get me excited where I can kind of, like, try to figure out some sort of, like, different combos I can do with this stuff. I, I really, really enjoy that. That is so, that is so cool. So some people, too, I don't think he has anything, no, some people have air jutsus as well, like, um, Chris Mark, uh, Sasuke has a giant fireball in the air, uh, fireball jutsu? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go with that. Which can have some dastardly effects. Try this out at home. Try this out at home. I don't have a good way of showing this off right now, but I remember doing this with my friends and stuff back in the day. So, go to training mode or whatever. Have two curse mark second state Sasuke's, and at the same time, jump up in the air and do his fireball jutsu thing. Both, both of them, like, collide with each other, and they absolutely tank the frame rate. And they, like, don't dissipate, I don't think. At least not for a long time. It's, like, a, a weird uh, collision thing with them where, like, it was an oversight where they probably didn't think people were going to do that or something. And it, it just, it tanks the frame rate. Totally try that. Super cool stuff. Uh, so, yeah, like, the combat system in this game is actually kind of... Oh, and, like, you can hold back to block. I forgot to say that, but, see, I like that. I don't like guard buttons. I'm... I'm too I'm too ingrained into normal fighting game culture to want to press a button to block. I want to hold like I want to hold down back or back or whatever, you know. So you can just block by doing that. Like I said, you can substitute out of things with 75% meter. Like this is like, you know, this is generic anime fighting game, but it's also like it is aiding and I really feel like they did try to put their best foot forward and actually try to create like a good fighting game. Like no, I don't think they're trying to make you know, some, some, uh, virtual fighter or Tekken or something like that, but they made like a competent anime game where I feel like nowadays, <clears throat> nowadays, if you buy like an anime game, it's like, it's a coin flip as to whether or not it's worth playing in, you know, in, in my opinion, uh, something else that's cool. I don't know. There's not, unfortunately, like I said, just by myself, there's not super good ways to show this off, but there are like some characters 
have transformations, which is cool. We'll we'll go with like uh, we'll go with Rock Lee for an example. But something I want to talk about is Kakashi has a transformation. It takes like again like seventy five percent meter. It's his down X at first. You know what? I'm gonna go with Kakashi for a second. I just want to show off some cool stuff. We'll we'll just yes. Uh, sorry, Sasuke, you can be a punching bag again. So some characters have transformations that give them different specials and different tools and stuff and different moves. So before in like Clash Ninja two. Uh, the, oh, the, my pronunciation is going to get wild here. The Sharingan version of Kakashi was a separate character, but in this, it's so, this, in this game, and it was from Clash Ninja 3 onward, it was a transformation. Who else are you going to find on YouTube that plays fighting games competitively that is going to try to break down a Japanese Naruto GameCube game as if it is a real fighting game? You've, you've come to the right place, my friend, if you want that. And if you do want that, I really wonder what you're doing with yourself, but I also really appreciate that you landed on this channel. So, normally, like, his down, his back A is, like, he he, he brings out the, the, the book he probably shouldn't be reading in public, and if you if you attack him, he teleports behind you. If you've read the manga, watch the show, you probably have a good guess as to what he's going to do. So he's got that, you know, he's got normal moves and stuff like that. Uh, there, some characters, him and Kabuto have some interesting stuff with, like, down A, where they, like, teleport under the ground. I, as a kid, I thought that was so cool. I, I can't explain why, but you know what? Seeing it again, that's still kind of cool. So, oh, oh, I gotta turn the health back on to, like, not that. So, if we, some characters, too, they're, like, their jutsu stuff. You can, like, charge them. So, with Kakashi, we have Lightning Blade. And what we can do with it, so say I actually hit him, so it kind of pushes him away. I didn't charge it whatsoever, but what I can do, I can reset it too. I can charge it, and then it, you know, it's different, does more damage or whatever. Uh, so that's what Kakashi can do. But if it was 75% meter, uh, or is it back? It might be back X. I'm a silly boy, it is back X. So now we have some different moves. So Back A, this one's super cool. I wish I could make... Because the other thing is I'm recording, like, away from my GameCube with a wave bird. I don't have two wave birds. And trying to record with my mic and another wired controller, I don't know if I could do that. I wish I could make him just do, like, ultimate jutsu. Is that a, is that a thing? What, what does this one do? That one's just, uh... Do, the, do, do something cool, Sasuke. Do something cool. Is that just going to keep throwing me? Oh, you can throw escape. I believe, if you press, like, throw at the right time. Oh, I want him to do an ultimate jutsu so bad. I don't know if I can make him do that. I can make him jump, though. That's cool. Do ultimate jutsu. Oh, but, see, without it, if it's just a normal attack, you see, it kind of, like, teleports me away. But if I could if I could make this poor boy actually do an ultimate jutsu, which, unfortunately, like I said, with my limited setup, kind of hard right now. But for some jutsus... Like, say, Zabuza's hidden mist thingy. Um, Kakashi can copy the entire ultimate jutsu, which is super cool. And he just kind of plays his own animation, but with, like, a kunai instead of Zabuza's sword and stuff like that. You know what? You know what? Enough excuses. I am going to figure this out. I will be, I will be right back with you. All right. Don't say... I never did anything for you. I have, like, I remember this. I have, like, old extension cables that I used to use before I got, like, the wave burn and stuff. And this barely gets to my desktop setup, but it does. So, I have a second controller plugged in. I am one human, but let's, let's try to do this. So, if I can, like... Yeah, so... Excuse my excitement. Let's see, he copies Sasuke's jutsu with that. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do a little more with that, but then so that's one he can do he can do with back A. If he can't copy the jutsu, they were they were like lore accurate with this. Like he can't copy Gara's jutsus and stuff. It's just things like he could probably physically do. So the other thing he gets is a different special for this entirely. Instead of the lightning blade, now it's like more of a normal attack you could combo into. Which that looks so cool. And I don't did he get a down no, okay, so yeah, it's just he can copy Jutsus and then he gets that. So, and then I think, like, his down, his down A might be, is that the same? Yeah, so some moves are different. 
and stuff like that, which is which is cool. So Sasuke can also do that. So normally, as you saw that one already through Kakashi, don't think. Oh yeah, some characters like with their forward A's like that, it actually takes chakra up if you hold it, which is you know that's interesting. That's cool. And like that's his back A. So some of them are kind of different. His down A is like so like. A more normal A button might look something like that, and you can like hold them down. I think they do chip damage normally, I believe. Um, so then he can also back X that Sharingan, and now same type of deal. You can do some of that. I, I wonder, does he have another? Oh, see, an air one, just like that. And now I believe if I do like, ooh. Or was my was my timing off? Oh, don't worry, I got this. Oh, oh, wait, I have to be facing the right way. That might help. So, oh, I'm getting confused. What controller is what? All right, bring it. Oh, well, bring it again. Yeah, see, oh, that's so cool. So, let me show you one of my one of my favorites. I know, like at this point, I'm almost getting away as to why I like. It. No, this is important because I'm kind of showing. Some cool intricacies this game has that you know later Naruto games did not have. So let's let's get our let's get ourselves down to Zabuza. Just because this was this was always one of my favorites. Random stage, yeah, we'll do that. Is he could still do this in Clash Ninja 2 with like the Sharingan version? But again, if you haven't played the Clash Ninja games, we'll do some of that. Do I have movement? Oh no, I got to find the movement option again. Is it this one? Not that oh not that one. There we go. So do some of some of that. And I love this. I love this so much. This is so cool. And I love how Oh, the, it's different. I s or was it like that in Clash of 2? But I like how they incorporate something slightly different for him, because he obviously doesn't have the sword, but it's like something he could still probably mimic. This is... Oh, I love this. Any of the graphical glitches, that's just from forcing the widescreen. You don't have to play in widescreen. Because it's, like, true widescreen, I, I technically. I, you know. So, I love I love little flourishes and details like that. So, now that I have this second controller out, let's let's see if I could uh, show you what I was talking about before. This 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 can be some dumb fun. So, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get this going on. Get another one of him. And so, like I said, this is also three player. This is also four player. Something I've, I haven't played this with my friends in a while, but something that I remember having fun with was doing like, I think there's just three of us at the time. And we did like a three player free for all. Those can get hectic. There's a lot of backstabbing going on in that. And, you know, everybody kind of plays fighting games and likes Naruto. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a good time. It's a good time. So, you know, loading times in this game. Super quick too, and like I'm just running off the disc. It's probably even quicker with current adapter setups and stuff. So, oh, you know he's got he's got some cool jutsu too. Let's just let's just appreciate this for a second. I love this. Like it's like the uh, black chidori thing, and like it's so cool. So you know I I still like old Naruto. I love that. So the 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 problem comes into play. Let me once again. Is it this one? Yeah. So this aerial special of his. How? Oh goodness. How do I? Oh, it's not in the air. You press down X. So this this can create a problem. So say so both holding down. <laughs> so so they kind of just they kind of just chill there. Frame rate absolutely tanks. Like this is this is unadvisable. Let's see. If, can we get another one going? Oh no, we can't. Okay, but if you have four players, now that I physically cannot, so we could we could attempt to. Oh, you can't. Oh, my chakra's not coming back. Oh, it's just. Oh, but if I made it come back, like what? What is this? Oh, oh, I don't want to turn health bars off. What is this? Give me. I I demand my chakra to come back. Are they? Okay, no, it's just, it's just not a thing. While those are still out. Interesting. Interesting. But yeah, as you, as you can see, now this is not a showcase for how the game is. This is literally just like a random case scenario that I found out one time. Maybe, you know, maybe me and one of the dudes are messing around in training mode trying to... It's like it's 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 like the fighting game brain where like you kind of want to see 
how certain moves interact with each other, and then occasionally you'll stumble across that. Maybe, maybe we saw it online somewhere, but I, I really feel like that was almost something that we were just messing around with and did ourselves. So, I don't want to waste too much more of your time. I know this has been kind of a, a longer video. You know, I, I have a passion for this kind of stuff. Um, this game's great, too, if you just want to, like, play by yourself. I didn't really talk about much of the modes, because, you know, like I said, my brain kind of focuses on gameplay, and so there's, like, there's single-player story stuff, there's, like, a mission mode to unlock characters and stuff, and you got, and I always appreciate this kind of stuff a lot when I'm just kind of playing solo and stuff. They have, like, an arcade mode, they have a survival mode, so you can just, like, pick a character, play through ten rounds or whatever, just... You know, have a good time. You can do CPU battles with more than just one-on-one. -on -one. You can try out CPU battles with one-on-three or do the three-way stuff that's uh, free-for-alls and all that kind of stuff. Um, I feel like I, there's some... Oh, yeah. So, there's there's reasons, reasons, numerous reasons, that I kind of like this stuff more than, say, the Storm games. So, okay, let, let me preface this. I have played a lot of Naruto games. A lot of Naruto games. I, I love Naruto. So, see? Another sword character. I just like... So, some of them... I... I excuse my, my, my ADHD riddle brain. However, I do like that there's certain properties that aren't even balanced that well. If you if you noticed, his sword attacks will take away your chakra. <laughs> That's busted. That's messed up. Because he still has, like, a good move set. He does, he does not... He does not need it whatsoever. But I, I like it. I like that it's there. So, with the, with so I've played like I think I've played every Ultimate Ninja game, including like the PSP ones. I've played those. I've played, you know, I've played like all some of the DS ones. I really liked the Ninja Destiny games when I was younger. Those were really cool. Um, I think they were pretty graphically impressive for the DS too. Like honestly, for being like you know random anime games. I've played every Ultimate Ninja Storm game except Generations. And I've, I've been suckered into buying them numerous times. I have the Storm games on, like, a combination of the PS3 and 360. I got all of them on the Xbox One when they did, like, the trilogy stuff, along with Storm 4 when it came on the Xbox One. And then when they came out on the Switch, I got, like, the trilogy on the Switch. And then when I started getting the PC gaming, I got all of them on PC, including, like, buying Revolution again and stuff like that. Storm Revolution is one of the worst PC ports I've ever seen, by the way. I just I just want to throw that out there. Ve like, very much look into that game if you're going to buy it on PC. It's unfortunate because that, you know, you could run it in high resolution on the PC and stuff like that, but it is, a, it is an awful PC port, and I think Storm Revolution is, like, the best Storm game. Anyways, I have played a lot of Storm games. I like the Storm games. I've played a lot of... Wait, did I just say I like the Storm games? Oh, excuse me. I've played a lot of Ultimate Ninja, and I've liked the Ultimate Ninja games. I've played a lot of the Storm games. I have, like, Stockholm Syndrome with the Storm games, where I keep thinking the next time I buy a copy of them that I'm actually going to enjoy it, and I never do. So, <laughs> so here's my thing, here's my thing. Like I said, when I was younger, I played Ultimate Ninja, I played some Ninja Destiny, I played the American Clash of Ninja games up until, up until I got all my GameCube stuff figured out. Um... And then when I got, like, a little bit older, I played the Storm games and stuff like that. So, my thing is, when I was younger, and I knew less about fighting games and stuff like that, I played a lot of fighting games. I still, even as, like, a casual, I still played, like, KOF and stuff, even though I barely knew how to play those games properly. And so, in that mindset, I think, you know, I think the Storm games are fine. But once I started caring just a little bit more about gameplay, I really started not like the Storm games from a gameplay point of view. I think graphically they're great. I think the story modes are fine and stuff like that. If I'm I'm trying to think from like a casual perspective, I think they're fine. Um, the problem is is like if you have even like an ounce of interest in trying to learn some mechanics and try to play a game a little more competitively, even even in a sense of like you and your friends are trying to, like, one-up each other and just, you know, have some fun with that. Um, those games are so incredibly limiting. Every character feels the same. I'm talking about the Storm games specifically. And it's just a matter of staring at the substitution bar. As soon as you see somebody substitute, you just press, you know, triangle and then X. And then you mash circle again. And then you chakra cancel. And you just, you just 
keep extending your combo until you're out of chakra, and then it's just a reset, and then just staring at the substitution bar, getting your chakra up. There is zero reason to do any jutsus in that game, in any of the games, rather, I should say. It's just a matter of press circle a bunch, chakra dash, look at the substitution bar. I, and maybe it's me being overly clinical with them, but I can't help once... It's like once you figure out the best way to do something, it's hard to go back to doing a worse version of what you're trying to do just for funsies. I, I have trouble disassociating the two. It's like if I'm playing something that remotely resembles a fighting game, I want to figure out like optimal combos and all this kind of stuff. That's just, that's just where my brain goes. So because of that... With how limiting the storm games are, I just I have a hard time keeping my attention with those games. Maybe if I'm playing with other people, that's different. But even then, I I would rather play something like this by far. So I think like the older, they're not 2D but 2.5D Ultimate Ninja games. Those hold up a little bit better. Those are so unique. They're way more like almost like a platform fighter. But these these Clash of Ninja games, these almost almost feel like a normal 3D fighting game. Like. They're not there. They don't have a hundred different combos like Tekken and stuff like that. But like aiding was like they tried. They didn't. Ju they didn't just give us a shoehorned in anime game, knowing it was just going to sell off the name alone. I feel like they they really tried. They made like a unique three D fighting game. Like it's not super deep or anything like that. But if I if I want to you know relive some nostalgia, play a Naruto game. I'm going to be popping in this. I think this game's actually pretty good. I think there even is, like, a very small competitive scene. I've never looked hard into it myself or anything like that. But, yeah, I feel like this game plays great. It's got a nice arcade mode. It's really fun with other people and stuff like that. This game's, like, actually good, and I don't say that about many anime games besides, like, Dragon Ball Fighters. This game's actually good. So, the whole point of this, I think this game's cool. I feel like there probably still is... Some Americans out there that don't even know that this exists. Maybe somebody grew up with the PS2 and they never played any Clash Ninja games and they never played any of the Wii ones. If that, if you fall into that camp. So this is a GameCube game. I think I've said that multiple times, but do with that information what you will. Its Japanese title would be like Gekatao Ninja Tyson 4. Do with that what you will. Dump your own copy. Patch it with the English translation. Play this game. This game's super cool. Thank you for watching this video and stuff like that. I've had a lot of fun talking about this. I haven't thought about this game in a while, and it was fun to pop it in and kind of relive some of the stuff. It's, you know, it's been a lot of fun. And I love hardware. I love showing off what the GameCube can do. I love showing off physical media. This, this was a cool video to make for me. So I hope you enjoyed it. And with that, I will catch you guys later.